Today on Give Me Shelter, after Kristen receives an email from another facility, she must quickly find a way to save two puppies from being euthanized. I was trying to call some foster parents, but nobody's available. I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's not good. An emaciated pit bull covered in mange has been rescued by a volunteer, but is his condition untreatable? Your eyelids are rolled in and your lashes are chronically rubbing against your eye, and so eventually you get to a point like this where you can't open your eyes anymore. I just received an email from a gentleman that works at an animal control facility in Abbeville, South Carolina. And unfortunately, somebody brought these two puppies into him and he's not able to house them because they're too young and they don't have a lot of cage space there. The animal control officer in Abbeville can only hold the puppies at the shelter for one more day due to a lack of space. If Kristen can't find a way to take them in, he will be forced to euthanize them. We need some foster parents or some volunteers that might be willing to make that drive up to Abbeville, South Carolina to save these puppies' lives today. An emaciated four-month-old pit bull covered in mange has just been rescued by a volunteer who found him wandering down a busy street. Unfortunately, we're not able to trace uh, Marion back to a human owner because he was found without a collar. And when we brought him into the shelter, we scanned him for a microchip and there's no microchip. And of course, nobody has called in to say, oh, I lost this dog that I was neglecting. His eyes are swollen shut. His paws are sw swollen three or four times the size of what his paws ought to be. This is like really disgusting that it got to this point. I mean, that's just, you don't, you don't do that. It's like letting your kid run around, you know, with uh, gangrene or something awful. You just, you just don't do that. This very well could have been started out in a good situation and then exacerbated to be what it is yeah. now. I mean, it would have been a small rash in one location right. and then it all ate up the entire body and it'll be a month before this dog looks normal. You know, Marion's case is a very emotional case. This has really affected Lauren. She's so horrified by his condition that she is going to go above and beyond to make sure the community knows that first this even happened. Sometimes, you know, it's, it takes horrible, sad situations like this to catch the, this one person and you have to keep doing it because you might get one more person on your side, one more person, one more person, one more person. Lauren is getting some good pictures of him so that she can go and post them right onto Facebook to see if we have anybody willing to respond to take him into their home. While Lauren is posting photos on the Facebook page, Pet Helper staff is diligently looking through their database and making calls to find Mary in a foster home. He needs hands-on special care that will be hard for the shelter to provide on a 24-hour basis. Janet is, is awesome. She, uh, she's hardcore, she's brilliant. To have a chance for Janet to come and attack the situation, that dog was very lucky. He probably has had a chronic eye infection and when you squint long enough, your, your muscles fatigue and you can no longer hold your eyelids out in a normal position. So now your eyelids are rolled in and your lashes are chronically rubbing against your eye, which of course causes more pain and causes more squinting. And so eventually you get to a point like this where you can't open your eyes anymore. So right now, Dr. McKim is doing a skin scrape. She's getting the first layer of the skin off of him. She'll be able to determine what kind of mites they are. There are another case of mange called sarcoptic mange that is highly contagious, and we have a whole different protocol for that. But right now, she's trying to determine, is it sarcoptic mange, is it demodectic mange, or if there is also a bacterial infection involved. Hey, Clint. Yeah, I'm doing good. Hey, I got a favor to ask you. I just received an email from um, Abbeville, South Carolina, 
and they just had uh, two little puppies. And if I don't get them today, um, they're probably going to have to be euthanized at the end of the day. I remembered a friend of mine owns a plane, so I gave him a call, and he happens to be in town this weekend. And I was wondering if you would be available to fly me up there to get them. Uh, that would be great. That would be great. If I sent a volunteer up there on a five-hour drive, that would be a 10-hour drive. So I'm very excited my friend is able to fly me up and get me back in two hours. I'm going to leave right now, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Clint. All right, bye-bye. Hey, Katie, I just got off the phone uh, with the animal control facility in Abbeville. My friend's in town. He's going to fly me up there. It's about a two-hour trip to go pick him up. Um, if you could do me a favor and pull up our foster list and start making phone calls, I just need one home for two puppies. And um, I'll see you in a bit. i got to go gather some things. All righty. All right, thank you. Our flight time is probably an hour up and an hour back, and I'm going to be in close contact with my staff so that we can have a foster parent here when we arrive. While Kristen flies up to save the puppies, it will be crucial for Katie to secure a foster home for when they return. While Kristen is flying up to Abbeville to save two puppies from being euthanized, Katie is trying to find them a foster home since they are too young to stay in the shelter. Hi Annie, this is Katie calling from Pet Helpers. We have a couple of foster puppies that are coming in from Abbeville and we are hoping to um, see if you're available to take some in. No? Okay, well thank you very much. Hi Sue, this is Katie calling from Pet Helpers. I'm calling because we have a couple of puppies coming in from Abbeville this weekend. No? Okay. If Katie doesn't find a home for them by the time Kristen returns, the puppies may not get the hands-on care that they need. After reviewing the skin scrape, Dr. McKim has diagnosed Miriam with demodectic mange. It is not contagious to humans or other animals, but it is still very painful for Miriam. Oh, honey, honey. Oh, that's my buddy. Whoa. You know, it's amazing he's not covered in fleas. Good they point. probably don't even like them. Oh, gosh, yeah. Even the fleas don't want them. What we're going to do is we've already started him on antibiotics. He'll get a therapeutic bath tomorrow. We will check out his eyes a little bit more. We will start him on a medication to control his Demodex. Oh, you poor buddy. Yes, but you do have a nice, you have a very nice disposition. Hopefully we're going to find it a foster home. That would be another big step. They, they always heal faster outside of the shelter. Um, and then we'll move on from there, get him back in, get him adopted out. Hopefully he'll get adopted out from the foster home. Getting back into Charleston right now from going and picking up the puppies in the plane. I really hope Katie was able to find me some foster homes because they need 24 hour care, so it's not an option for them to stay at the shelter. Hi, Brent. This is Katie calling from Pet Helpers. How are you doing? We were hoping to find somebody to foster them. No? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Bye. I've tried to call about 10 people now, and everyone's pretty much unavailable. I don't really know what to do next. Hello? Hey, Kristen, it's Katie, how are you doing? Hey, Katie, I'm doing good. So did you find me some foster homes? Yeah, I was trying to call some foster parents, but nobody's available, I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's not good. Well, unfortunately, Katie, while I've been gone, has not been able to find foster care for these puppies. And so that's kind of concerning because they got to have foster homes. Well, I have one person. She's already got some puppies, but let me see if she's willing to take this on. Um, I should be back with the puppies in about 20 minutes. All right, well, I'm sorry I wasn't able to find somebody. All right, thanks, Katie. Right. Yes, you're welcome. All right, bye. Bye. Kristen is running out of resources for foster homes. Hopefully, her backup plan will work.
Well, unfortunately, Katie, while I've been gone, has not been able to find foster care for these puppies. And so that's kind of concerning because they got to have foster homes. But I do have one really awesome foster parent named Pam. She currently has some other puppies, but I'm going to give her a try anyway. Hey, Pam, it's Kristen from Pet Helpers. How you doing? I just uh, got back in town with two little puppies from Abbeville, South Carolina, but I'm kind of desperate for some foster homes for them. And if you could at least buy me, you know, 48 hours to a week, I'm sure I can make other arrangements. Oh, uh, you would? Oh, thank you so much, Pam. Awesome. Before the puppies can go into foster care, they need to be examined, vaccinated, and dewormed. It's okay, guys. Chris, to the medical room. Chris, to the medical room. Right now, Chris and I need to give them a general physical to find out what condition they are in, if they have any fleas, if they have any ear mites or anything like that. All right, Chris, I'm gonna give you this one. Hey, little buddy. They have pretty significant. There was bumps on her chest. Well, you know, I'm seeing some fleas, so. so could be from fleas. Yeah, definitely she could be from fleas. This one's a little worse than the other one. Yeah. I think probably what we should do is put a vet check sheet in, right. let the vets do a skin scrape, and see if they have any mites on them that we might need to treat them for. I'm kind of concerned for these guys because that skin issue can turn into an infection, and at this age, an infection could kill these guys. After just a few hours of searching for foster homes, Nicole Fredericks, who is a regular foster care parent for pet helpers, was able to take Marion home and immediately start nursing him back to health. But he still has a long road ahead of him. She actually specializes in taking care of pit bulls and skin conditions. So I'm very grateful that as of right now, he gets to go home every night and be in a loving home. His adoption is going to be very special since he got off to such a rough start. I think probably what we should do is put a vet check sheet in, right. let the vets do a skin scrape and see if they have any mites on them that we might need to treat them for. We gave Dr. Love a call, let him know the puppies were here and that we were concerned about their skin. So he came in and looked at them and he said that they have a bacterial infection going on right now. With the use of antibiotics and flea treatment, both puppies should be healed in just a few days. Pam Haskell has volunteered to take the puppies home with her until they are healthy and old enough to be adopted. You. Hey, Pam. It's good to see you. Yeah. Have a seat. Have a seat. The reason Pam is taking these puppies is they're too young to be in the shelter. They're too young to get fixed. And once they're spayed and neutered, they will be available for adoption. So they're little hound puppies, um, black, white, and brown. Um, but they do have a little bit of a skin condition going on. I did see some fleas on them. Within the next, you know, 12 hours, they should all be gone. So you want to go see them? Yes, I do. All right. Awesome. Let's go see your babies. Here they are. Aren't they cute? Yeah. One is named Abby and one is named Ville, but you're more than welcome to name them whatever you would like. Oh, Kristen. <laughs> Say, do you want to foster? Sure. Awesome. With their heart. They're a good baby. They are. Yes, they are. You're going to have a good time at our house. That's right. Pam is a wonderful foster parent. She's very reliable. She always, always answers our call to need. So these little puppies are going to be in the best foster home ever. They're going to be lucky little guys. Kristen, that uh, puppy from Abbeville's here with the adopters. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Chelsea. Okay. Let's go see our puppy. The little puppies that I flew up to Abbeville a few weeks ago to get and save, they were uh, completely healed and they were brought into the shelter and put up for adoption. And one of the puppies scored a really awesome home. 
We've come back today to Pet Helpers. Uh, we wanted all of the staff to see Bailey, and um, we just wanted to say thank you, and you know, hope that other people will get the same message. Something that really changes my day is when somebody walks through the door with an animal they just adopted to uh, let us see it and see how well it's doing and to thank us for the service that we provide. That really means a lot. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Good. How about you? Hi. How do you guys like your new puppy? Doing Excellent. Good. Yeah. Do you mind if I take a look at her skin? Not at all. Awesome. Have you seen her skin flaking at all? No. It's definitely better than it was when we uh, first picked her up. Yes. Okay. Her skin looks really, really good, so I feel a lot better about that, that she's not going to have any uh, future skin conditions. Well, we thank you guys very much for adopting from us. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm super excited over the fact that uh, their story has come to a happy ending. The puppies that we flew up to get that were going to be euthanized are now both in loving homes. And at Pet Helpers, it, it takes all of us working as a team together to save animals' lives and to be a voice for these animals. Marion has been living happily with his foster mom, Nicole, for the last few weeks. After lots of medical care, his weight has already gone up and his mange has started to clear. Nicole is bringing Marion into Pet Helpers for a routine follow-up with the staff. Sweetheart, I can't believe you look so good. Oh, Kazoo, Kazoo, Kazoo. His progress is really remarkable. We still have ways to go. His paws are still infected, and still swollen, but his personality has come out. He looks like a different animal. Marion, look at you, buddy. Hey, girl. Hey. How's it going? Good. Pit bulls are uh, just really not looked upon as the, the breed to adopt. We have to break through that stereotype and find him the right home. Have you uh, been able to promote him and take him out to get him adopted, find him a home? Uh, with the rain, it's been really hard. Uh, we haven't been able to go to the dog park, which is my favorite place to take him. He loves it. You know, I'm a little frustrated that Nicole hasn't been able to get Marion adopted yet. Well, we definitely have a few challenges with him, um, unfortunately. You know, his breed's against him because he's a pit bull. People yeah. are going to automatically assume that he's going to want to kill cats, bunnies, and yeah. all the above. I have so many animals in my house, like not just dogs and cats, but I have like, I have mice, I have rats. I mean, he's fine with them too. So we kind of need to discuss how we're going to approach that. And of course, his health issues, since they're going to be long term, it probably could take up to a year for Marion to fully grow his hair back, for all the swelling to go down. So we need somebody that knows all that and is willing to take that on as a challenge. Maybe you could email me some pictures, some videos, okay. so that we can get it on our social media here at Pep Helpers to start promoting him. Because it's really important that we find him a home. Yeah. I know you can't keep him forever, so uh, we need to start uh, pursuing this a little harder. Jason's going to be working with Nicole, and Jason's going to use some of our dogs here at the shelter to kind of switch him out on different dogs to see how he gets along. Go say hi. You, you, what's going on, Nicole? Hey. How's he doing? Good. I didn't recognize him at first, um, just because less scabs and uh, just coming right up to you, friendly, you know, ready to play. And he still looks a little funky with that crazy fur, but uh, if you saw him the first day, oh my God, he's amazing. He has no mites left on his body. He's just, his fur is coming back in, his skin's recovering. And so that's why, you know, he still looks kind of rough. We should try to get him in the yard like with some of our dogs just to see, um, you know, what he does with the shelter guys. Yeah, that sounds good. As long as, um, I think just one at a time would be good so that, you know, he doesn't get stressed out and lose any fur. Or, you know, I don't, I don't want him to get sick because it's so cold out, so. Oh, mom, <laughs> grab your leash, let's go. It's very important for us to be able to see that Marion can get along with a bunch of different dogs, um, whatever situation he's in. So it's very important that Nicole allows us to step across that line so that we can uh, have even more information about Marion. Julie, you ready? Got a boyfriend. Come on. Put your new boy. Ah, 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 ah. Get him. <laughs> Good boy. There you go. Frolic. Play. <laughs> you jump, I jump. 
So Mari just met Julie for the first time, which was um, a pit mix that's in at Pet Helpers right now. I mean, he just ran right to her and they started chasing each other. He jumped up and put his paws on her back. No hesitation, no pain. Now I really don't have to worry about when I introduce him to another dog, you know, I feel like he's just going to start playing like he did just now. Just by showing that a dog like that is a good dog, seeing him with another dog playing in the yard, uh, hanging around people, it's the individual dog that's aggressive, not a breed. Yeah, this, this is what my house is like 24-7. I was amazed that he can run and that much with his paws so swollen. He'd be a great second dog for somebody, you know? Yeah, well that, I really want him to have a home with another dog just because he is so high energy like most pit bulls. Usually when people have one dog, they think that a second is gonna be way more, you know, way more time, way more food. When really they, they entertain each other, they take care of each other and it can actually be a lot easier. I need to find somebody like at the dog park who has a dog who's a little like, you know, needs their dog to just like run and get energy out and I think that's really what's gonna you know sell him so to speak. No matter what he's been through in his past he's kind of left that behind and now he's becoming a whole dog and I can't wait until he gets adopted into his forever home. Since it's finally not raining today, I was hoping to go to the dog park, and um, that's where I would really, really like to find a potential adopter, because that way they already have a dog. When I meet them in person, I can also take time to kind of interview them, make sure they're taking care of their dog. I can physically see that their dog is healthy or not, and it's, you know, that's always what I'm hoping for. If you would like to assist in animal welfare or give a new home to an abandoned animal, please contact your local animal shelter to learn how. Today on Give Me Shelter, after Kristen receives an email from... and he's not able to house them because they're too young and... An emaciated four-month-old pit bull covered in mange has just... ...three or four times the size of what his paws ought to be. 
like really disgusting that it got to this point. I mean, that's just, you don't, you don't do that. It's like letting your kid run around, you know, with uh, gangrene. Or... It will be hard for the shelter to provide on a 24-hour basis. I don't buddy, it's okay. Hey, Clint. Yeah, I'm doing good. Hey, I got a favor to ask. Hey, Katie, I just got off the phone uh, with an animal control facility in Abbeville. While Kristen is flying up to Abbeville to save two puppies from being euthanized, Katie is trying to find them a foster home since they are too young to stay in the shelter. Hi, Annie, this is Katie calling from Pet Helpers. Dr. McKim has diagnosed Miriam with demodectic mange. It is her animals, but it is still very painful for Miriam. Like, oh gosh, yeah. Even the fleas don't want them. Always heal faster outside of the shelter, um, and then we'll. I really hope Katie was able to find me some foster homes because they need 24-hour care. So. It's hoping to find somebody to foster them. To find foster care for these puppies, and so that's kind of concerning because they got... I just uh, got back in town with two little puppies from Abbeville, South Carolina. Right now, Chris and I need to give them a general physical to find out what... After just a few hours of searching for foster homes, Nicole Fredericks, who is a regular foster care parent. What we should do is put a vet check sheet in, right. let the vets do a skip scan. So he came in and looked at them and he said that they have a bacterial infection going on. Pam Haskell has volunteered to take the puppies home with her until they are healthy and... Kristen, that a uh, puppy from Abbeville's here with the adopters. They were brought into the shelter and put up for adoption, and one of the puppies scored him. We've come back today to Pet Helpers. Uh, we wanted all of the staff, and um, we just wanted to say thank you, and you know, hope that other people will get. Marion has been living happily with his foster mom Nicole for the last few weeks. Nicole is bringing Marion into Pet Helpers for a routine follow-up with the staff. Sweetheart, I can't believe you look so good. Oh, good night. Jason's going to be working with Nicole, and Jason's going to use some of our dogs here at the shelter. Hey, Julie, you ready? Got a boyfriend? Come on. What's your new boy? Ah, 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 ah. Eat him. Julie for the first time, which was um, a pit mix that's in at Pet Helpers right now. He's kind of left that behind, and now he's becoming a whole dog, and I can't wait. like to assist in animal welfare or give a new home to an abandoned animal, please contact your local animal shelter to learn how.